This is a Gulf Coast High School marching band, one of the largest in the state of Florida. I don't want to brag, but I'd say our band is pretty good. Tonight they showed how good they are. In a rivalry football game against Baron Collier. We're a huge band, we're all really close, and it's just one big family. It's awesome. Tonight was a good warm-up for the family of 351 members. And tomorrow in Disney's going to be a lot of fun. The marching band will head to Orlando to perform in the Disney Dreams Come True Parade. It's our ninth year performing for Disney. The band director says that's been made possible by raising money and community support. Help Molly find her trumpet. He's been leading the Sharks at Gulf Coast for nearly a decade. This is nothing new to him. But for the two drum majors, it will be the first time leading the band in the huge parade. Making sure the song's the right tempo, making sure the band is together, making sure they're starting and stopping in the right places, making sure the halts are called at the right times, um, just basically maneuvering 351 kids down a street in Disney. It's a huge weekend. This weekend is the kickoff for a statewide tour. In November, the band will perform during the halftime show at a Miami Dolphins football game. <laughs> And the Shark Band will head to Universal Studios for the Macy's Christmas Parade in December. I'm very excited. A busy schedule ahead for the Sharks, so look out. This band will rock the state going into next year. Joshua Landon, ABC7 News. Plans for a new parking garage that will add 250 spaces to downtown Naples are still on hold because of some stubborn hawks. Been out there a little bit longer now than we've thought. Not only are these hawks holding up work on this new parking garage for downtown Naples, they're also swooping down out of the trees and attacking people as they walk by. Just tonight, one of the parrot hawks swooped down on our photographer while we were getting video. We've had a couple of people hit in the head this week and drew a little blood. Nobody seriously or anything like that. But. Naples Natural Resources Manager Mike Bauer says he was almost attacked the other day too, but ducked to protect himself. Until the hawks do leave this area and find other trees to call home, Bauer has one message for people. You don't want to get hit with one of those birds. They're, they're a predator. Cooper's hawk's nest was found just before construction on the garage was supposed to start in April, and the city decided to wait for the birds. The hawks hatched in early May, but did not leave the nest around June 1st, as expected. While people in the area have enjoyed watching the birds grow, Business owners say they really need the parking spaces and that this will cause a crunch with the completion date now likely pushed beyond the first of the year. We need it done. We hope it doesn't, doesn't go into February. That won't be good at all. It's going to be a hassle for those of us that work here trying to park while they're building it. An argument between two men would explode into gunfire along Thomas Street. Police would arrest the shooter. But the real trouble happened inside apartment 9, where a walk to the refrigerator would forever change Akeem Williams' life. A bullet never meant for Akeem tore through his apartment window. He shows us tonight where it ended up. Akeem fell to the floor. He thought he'd been electrocuted. I've been through a lot, man. You got to be really strong mentally to take a situation like this. Akeem has not walked since. He's been paralyzed from the waist down since the afternoon of May 9th. The irony here, Akeem knew the shooter and had just recently cautioned him about his weapon. You go end up hurting somebody, you ain't gonna mean to hurt because you can't pull guns out on people. And look what happened. He pulled a gun out on the person and he shot me. He didn't mean to. Yeah, there you go. And he was a friend of yours? Yeah. Me and him was like pretty close friends. Akeem has since forgiven the shooter, but this 19 year old now must make up his last semester at Florida Christian Institute. Akeem was only weeks from graduating. You still going to do college too, aren't you? Yeah, I want to so bad, man. I love it, man. I miss school. I miss school already. Mostly, Akeem misses football and his independence. But to this day, he's never shed a tear and has always kept his smile. He feels good. He's even getting some feeling back in his thighs. Akeem plans to pursue treatment with the Neuro Recovery Network, part of the Christopher and Dana Ree Foundation. Because Akeem's dream is to play the field again someday with the women and also with his football team. Don't never take life for granted. <laughs> Do what you can do while you got the chance. Because, Akeem says, you don't always get another one. Patrick Flannery, NBC2. Number one, never go to the store hungry. It will cause you to shop on impulse. So grab a snack before going inside. Number two, stay away from displays meant to tempt you, causing you to shop on impulse. Make a list and stick to it. Number three, shop alone when you can. That way your friends or kids won't throw unwanted items into the shopping cart, making the bill much higher. 
Number four, shop at off-peak hours when it's not as busy. You can take your time and you won't buy more than you should. Number five, plan ahead. Know what you want to eat for the entire week. You're more organized and it can help you save more money. Number six, don't be afraid to shop at different stores. You can save more money if you know what stores charge for the common item. And finally, number seven, only shop once a week. It will cut back on impulse shopping and saving you a lot of money. Joshua Landon, ABC7 News. Seats and more, hundreds of them thrown out behind a North Naples business. On them, lots of numbers that could make a lot of problems for you. Dustin Chase is live with our exclusive investigation tonight. Dustin. Hi, Chris. The proof is all right here. A job application inside. You can see someone's social security number. Here's a receipt with the credit card number still attached. Now, we don't know who's... At least no one is taking responsibility for this, but Office Max is written all over it. Yeah, that's major liability for identity theft there. What may look like only garbage upon closer examination could mean a nightmare for many. I'd be very upset if that was... I'd be extremely, extremely upset. As soon as we walked around this Costco, we found several sensitive documents in this pile of trash. Sensitive, like applications for employment, including social security numbers. And there were receipts worth more than $30,000 with the credit card number printed right here. Office Max on airport pulling is plastered all over nearly every document. Could you just answer a couple quick questions? So we went to the store, searching for who left hundreds of identities exposed and why. Can you explain to us what out of the office? Okay. Can you can you explain to us what happened here? How people's social security numbers and credit card numbers were exposed today? Out of the store, no comment. With that, we left. Zero six six. And after trying to get comment from Office Max headquarters several times, the best Hello answer there. we got is they will investigate. Oops. We tried contacting several of the hundreds whose information was carelessly tossed behind a business with no success. Customers of Office Max say they'll think twice before shopping here again. With full credit card numbers? Take a look. Oh my God. And by the time we got back from Office Max, this empty parking lot is all we could find. So where the information, identities of hundreds of people went, we cannot confirm. Now, Office Max says their policy is to shred any type of document that has any sensitive information, but obviously that did not happen. Of course, we're going to keep digging for answers on to how this happened. We're live tonight in the Collier County Newsroom. I'm Dustin Chase, Wink News Now. All right, Dustin, let us know what you find. Thank you. Sure. According to the federal... Okay, Bob, how do you want to do this? From one day to the next, reporters never really know what they're getting into. What would I need a parachute for? <laughs> and Friday, it was a refurbished T-6 Texan from World War II. It was the aircraft in which all the pilots learned their advanced flying, such as air-to-air -air combat, dive bombing, and how to land on aircraft carriers. Photojournalist Bob Frank and I were about to experience that firsthand, but not before a lot of pre-flight preps and jokes they use 3,000 right times a year. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of flop out on that side. That is the Mr. Tail of the airplane. Go underneath the tail. That's going to deploy your parachute. And we'll come looking for you because we're going to want our parachute back. The people who buckled us in belong to nonprofit group History Flights. When you're coming back in for the landing, you will not have to do a thing. Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> You'll put it there. The flight you can buy is custom, as much aerobatics as you can handle, and it must have looked like I wanted the works. Here's an air sickness bag here, not been used for a long time, you'd be the first one. What you pay depends on how much time you want in the air. The ride we got was worth about $200. Your face always got white uh -huh. We uh, use it for searching for MIAs from World War II, people missing in action. And this program seems to work. In the last 10 years, remains of more than 30 soldiers were recovered. It's quite an emotional experience, especially for the families involved to uh, have their father or grandfather brought home. Many of the people who go with history flights are vets or their fathers were. And most, just like I did, wonder where their flight lands on the excitement scale. Uh, you'd be sitting at about a 7. <sighs> Felt like about an 11. Near Marco <laughs> Island, Dustin Chase, Wink News Now. That was something. That was something.